Sigma absolutely crushed it with this one. I did not think I was gonna be this impressed with the new Sigma 50 millimeter 1.2 art. Now I've personally compared the 50 1.2s from all the brands, some Sony, Canon, and Nikon. When it comes to image quality, they were almost all identical. The images looked so similar that finding any noticeable difference required me to zoom in at least 100%, I mean, ultra pixel peeping into the photos to find something different, right? It was so tedious. I would say that the thing that really stood out to me, if anything, was how much larger the Nikon 51.2 was over the Sony and the Canon. But at the same time, the Nikon was also the best lens for video, in my opinion, because of how well it controlled focus breathing. So with this larger size, you do get a much more well uh, a much more well-rounded lens for both photo and video. Sony, on the other hand, it looks like they push physics to the limit with making the smallest, or at the time, the smallest 51.2. It did rely on the focus breathing compensation feature that you can find in most of the newer cameras, right? The focus breathing wasn't terrible, but it was very noticeable. This is why I'm so impressed with the Sigma. They were able to make a lens slightly smaller than the Sony that has nearly zero focusing breathing. This now means that you can throw this lens on an older camera body, like what I'm shooting with right now, the Sony a7S III, and not have to worry about focus breathing or not having the focus breathing compensation to kind of make up for that. So that's a that's a that's one of the things that really stood out to me. All right, when we're talking about Boca, okay, so Sigma has also done something that none of the other brands have done with their 50 millimeter 1.2, and that is include 13 aperture blades for what they call beautiful Boca expressions. That's that's what it said on the, on the briefing, you know, and that statement, it's meaningless to me, right? But I will say, at least compared to the Sony, the Boca is slightly cleaner. And you can see that in some of the sample images that I took of myself. You don't see any of that color, like color bleeding or color fringing at the, at the edges of the bokeh balls in the back uh, that I sort of get on the Sony. So I will give the edge to the Sigma. When looking at the sharpness of this lens, by no surprise, both lenses are equally sharp. Now zooming into 100% into my eyeball. And also just please ignore some of the, <laughs> the morning eye crust that I, I promise you I wash my face in the morning but I admit, I clearly I missed a couple of uh, specs there that's how much detail you're getting with these lenses I couldn't even see it in the mirror you know but both of them at f1.2 you're getting I mean tack sharp images okay so in my eye you can see the reflection of my studio very clearly there just isn't much to say here um, I would say both shot wide open at f1.2 perform about the same uh, that's something that's not, that's not going to be a reason to pick one over the other. That's, that's probably the best way to say it. When it comes to autofocus, I've been very critical of previous Sigma lenses, like for example, the 16 to 28 F 2.8, but this one is probably one of the best focusing lenses that I've ever tested from them. Like not only is it completely silent, I mean, I'm talking, you can put your ear in a quiet room, you can put your ear up to it and you can barely hear it. Similar to the Sony, it's just quiet, you know? And it's extremely fast. But the thing is that the autofocus doesn't hunt or shall I say like it doesn't quickly shift back and forth when attaining autofocus, right? So you can go from infinity to close focusing and it just snaps without doing any of these you know, little movements. It's sure of itself. And compared to uh, Sony's 50 millimeter, both grab autofocus damn near instantaneously without making any noise. All right, now for video, I did a couple tests where I pop in and out of frame and where I, when I, I walk towards and away from the camera, shot at F1.2. And if I were to look at the clips, and if I did a blind test, right, with no knowledge of which was which, I truly would not be able to tell which was the Sony and which was the Sigma, which is obviously a compliment to the Sigma. Now, it wasn't perfect. Obviously, F1.2, I'm moving away. You can see both of the lenses are trying to catch up to me, but they both did, I mean, as good a job as you can probably ever ask for with a lens shooting at this wide of an aperture. 
right, taking a look at the build quality and the design that Sigma chose for the 51.2. So clearly they wanted that headlining feature of this being the lightest 51.2 ever made, right, with autofocus. So they, they did achieve that. So the 51.2 is 40, about 40 grams lighter than the Sony 50. But in terms of like overall size, it's kind of a wash. So the Sigma is maybe a slightly thinner than the Sony, but also like a millimeter longer. Both have a 72 millimeter filter thread. The Sigma does have more features on the actual lens. So there's an AF MF switch, an AFL switch, an aperture ring click switch, and an aperture ring lock switch. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I think both lenses are, they're both great. The Sigma is slightly lighter, but again, it's not something that you really notice. I think they're both, uh, both. They're, they're both really uh, built great. I, okay. All right. So I didn't get to do a proper outdoor photo shoot with this lens because the weather in Chicago has been extremely bipolar. But honestly, I would have just done that to make the video more interesting. From the testing that I did, I stand by what I said. This is one of the best Sigma lenses that I've ever used. And you know what? I don't see this lens being considered as like a budget option. And the price reflects that as well. It's $1,400 compared to Sony's $1,900 GM. Now, in my opinion, it definitely competes with the best of each brand. And if anything, it is probably the most clinically perfect lens out of the bunch. All right. I appreciate you making it up to this point. If you appreciate my videos and want to support my work here on YouTube, check out my portrait color grading presets. I've worked on them for years prior to launching them, and I genuinely use them to color grade all my work. Link will be in the description. Okay. Bye.